and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how easy it is to receive and decode data from the InMarsat satellites. Now the InMarsat satellites are dotted around the globe in a geostationary orbit. Now there are about 13 of them currently, but today we're only interested in those that cover the L-band. I believe there's around four of them, and that's at 1.5 gigs. Now these provide essential communication services such as telephone and data to a range of governments, aid agencies, businesses and also media outlets. Businesses covered are mainly shipping, airline and mining industries. Now you might think to yourself, why can't they just use mobile phones or radios? Well, the purpose of EMRSAT is to allow communications to exist in remote areas of the world where normal, reliable terrestrial networks are not available. So in this video, I'll provide a couple of examples of what we can receive and decode. The first of which will be maritime data. I also wanted to point out that in this video, how easy it is to receive in Marsat with the right antenna. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you would have noticed I recently posted an image. Now, this is an image of an L-band patch antenna mounted in the center of a satellite dish or a receiving normal home TV dish. Now, this particular patch antenna is a pre-modified GPS antenna from SDR Kits. Now, I'll leave a link in the description of where I purchased this from. It's a, it's a UK-based company and it was around $15 shipped to me. Now I had excellent results using the patch antenna in the middle of the dish and then pointing the dish in the rough direction of where Inmarsat is, or at least the Atlantic Ocean region east. Now I had excellent results using the patch antenna in the middle of the dish, but someone on a Facebook forum asked me how well the patch antenna performed mounted on something metal, you know, without the dish. So as you can see here, I've got the antenna mounted up on a metal drain pipe. The coax just runs across the wall in through the window and then it connects to my tuner 2 port of my RSP Duo. Now I connect to the tuner 2 port because it has bias T. That's right, it puts out around 4.8, 4.9 volts. So it powers the actual patch antenna. It's an active antenna. As you can see here, I've got SDR Uno running with some of the software. So let's take a look. Now for us to start receiving and decoding in Marsat messages, we need four pieces of software. Now the first piece of software will be your SDR receiving software. Now in this instance, I'm using SDR Uno from SDR Play, but you can also use other SDR software, which allows you to pipe the audio using VB cable. Now this brings us on to the second piece of software and that is VB Audio Cable. If you've seen some of my previous videos then you will know all about VB Audio Cable. If not then it's a virtual cable which allows the audio output from your SDR software to be internally routed to the input of other software packages. Now as VB Audio Cable runs in the background there is no UI for it so it's not shown on the screen. So our third piece of software that you can see on the left is called Skytel C, which is an STDC frame decoder. It essentially converts the audio sound from Inmarsat into a bunch of hex codes and then broadcasts these decoded frames out onto your local subnet to a specified port. In this case, the default port is 15003. Now the fourth and final piece of software that you can see here on the right is called Quick UI for Skytel C. Now what this does is receive those subnet broadcasts from Skytel C and decodes them into something tangible to read and look at or make sense of. So as we can see here, SDR Uno is set to the STDC NCS channel of the Inmarsat satellite at a frequency close to 1.54140 GHz. Now the mode of SDR Uno is set to USB, upper sideband, with a bandwidth of 4 kHz. Now once you have a signal in sight, slightly detune it so the peak is in the middle of that 4 kHz bandwidth. You will now need to make sure that the audio output from your SDR receiver software is pointing to VB audio cable. You will also need to look at the source settings of Skytel C and ensure audio is checked and then VB audio is selected as a playback device. Now under destination UDP, make sure it's enabled and the settings are the same as mine. Once you're ready, start Skytel C decoding those frames by pressing the blue play button on the top left of the application. Make sure that the transmit tick box is checked, otherwise the quick UI will not receive the decoded frames. 
You can now go over to the quick UI of Skytel C and ensure that the source's port box top left contains the same UDP port as that chosen in Skytel C application. In this instance, as mentioned before, it's 15003. Now, assuming that everything is working, you should start to receive frames on Skytel C. As they are decoded, they are transmitted, and the quick UI will start receiving them. You can check this by selecting the packets or debug tabs on the quick UI application. Now, after some time, you'll start to receive complete messages on the message tab. These messages can consist of weather reports, maritime alerts, and other types of STDC messages. Now, another interesting type of data that we can receive and decode from Inmarsat is Aero, which is a form of ACARS. Unfortunately, it's just a ground station to plane transmissions that we can receive and decode using the L-band antenna because the plane to ground station via Inmarsat has a C-band downlink on 3.6 gigs. But we can still receive and decode some useful and interesting data. Now, Aero is transmitted from Inmarsat with either 600, 1200 or 10500 BPS. You can notice which signals are which as the bandwidth are different for each of these sizes. As you can see here on the screen, we've got a 600 BPS signal and it's decoding some of the Aero messages. Now, using this application called J Aero, we can also find out some information about the aircraft which it's received the message for. Open up the tracking windows you can see here, click on the plane and it will actually open up a web browser and show you a picture of the actual aircraft. Now this uses by linking it to Flight Radar 24. Now with my patch antenna installed on the drain pipe as you saw earlier in the video, I'm able to receive and decode the 600 and 1200 BPS transmissions. Now when I try and decode the 10,500 BPS transmissions, unfortunately they're just not strong enough. Because of the wider bandwidth and there's more data, you do need a better signal to noise ratio. However, it did work extremely well when I had the patch antenna in the middle of the dish. Now I'm going to cover that in another video and I'm also going to cover how you can use SDR Sharp with this because there's a really cool Skytail C plugin for SDR Sharp. So keep an eye out for some future videos if you're interested in Inmarsat and what you can decode. I'm going to do a whole load of videos on this subject. I think it's uh, quite fascinating that we can receive and decode all of this information uh, just by using really small antennas. I'm also going to be experimenting with some other new types of antennas as well. So if you're interested, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell button, and when I upload new videos, you'll be able to tell. Also, follow me on Twitter. I'll leave a link down in the description for my Twitter. Twitter handle and if you'd like to support me on Patreon I'll also leave a link down in the description below. Anyway I hope you found this video interesting and if you've got any questions or comments or you've had experience with this please feel free to leave a comment or any suggestions that you might have that we might find useful in the comments section below. Until the next video guys take care and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.